Ugly Duckling Challenge. Quack, quack. Hello, my friends. It's DIYs by Dar. And here is my Ugly Duckling. I'm going to participate in the challenge that is being sponsored by Corey from Desert DIYs. And this one is really an Ugly Duckling. I'm going to go ahead and I'll give you the grand tour on what I'm working with and hopefully my ideas will work out. So, <clears throat> this is an old record player. You can see this would be where the records are stored. The only clue I have on what brand it is, is there is an S here. And I thought I saw a company by the name of Strand that sold these. This does not lift up. This does lift up and it does have a little stop. This does open up and I have no idea. Maybe to set your records there and then the speakers in there. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and untether you here, and let's go ahead and look at what we got going on on the inside here. And you can see that this part here is broken off of there, but everything seems to be in there, and the crank on the side actually does work. But, the sad thing is, when you look at the outside of this piece. Just look at how rough that is. And the surface is pretty dinged up and scraped up and there is a really big crack coming along the back side here. And this side's not really too much better. Um, I'm sure it is solid wood, um, but I don't know what type it is, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to sand it down and see what I get because I'm not really sure what I want to do with this yet. If I just want to paint it, paint it maybe a dark black, dark gray, dark blue, or do I want to take and restore it? If I can restore it, I would love to do that. I mean, back to the original wood. And I guess I'm just going to take the guts out and maybe I can sell them to somebody else that uh, wants to actually do a full restoration on the player itself. Um, I looked them up, guys, and it was anywhere from $1,000 down. And you're talking one that works and one that the cabinet is not in the shape like this. So I don't feel too bad with what I'm gonna do to this piece. So let's get to it. Well, I started with removing the insides or the actual player portion of it, and it was quite tough. It was in there pretty good. I needed to get that mechanism out. And I had to take the crank and turn it the opposite direction. That was all it took, and it came right out. The inside on the bottom, um, I just piece by piece started to remove the wood. And this was the speaker portion. And with the screwdriver and a little bit of force, uh, we did get all of this out. But where the bigger problem was going to be was up around the top where there was a heavier type of board that went all the way around and I, I couldn't separate it by hammering it. The whole thing shook. So I had to get the handy dandy roto tool out and basically cut it. Um, I took a hammer and I tried and this thing built probably 1940s very solid. I couldn't believe it. So I had to cut that off all the way around and remove it piece by piece. So I would have level walls um, with the top portion and save myself some space because that was just taking up inside space that I could use for the liquor cabinet that I am making. Here we are 
Um, all those sides are out and then you can see where I'm going to put the sides and the bottom back in there and finally I can wash it got all the dirt out I used TSP because I knew it was going to be really bad and it was really bad and it was going to be a bleeder um, I'm thinking that this would probably was mahogany I turned the piece upside down and started sanding and the more I looked at it, the more my decision went to go going ahead and painting it. It was in pretty bad shape. I went to the very top, 80 grit, orbital. It looked like it was going to come off fairly easy because it was so wore off. But it didn't. And by the time I was getting to the end on the one side the sandpaper was just so loaded up um, I was ready to switch sandpaper. When I go to the other side I scraped it first just to see if that of course was going to make a difference and I should have scraped it to begin with but it really looked like I was just going to be able to sand it right off. This is funny. Have you ever scraped anything off that just went up in dust? There it is. Back to a brand new sheet of 80 grit sandpaper and I'm sure you probably will figure out how the comparison is going to be. I couldn't quite make it the sandpaper was so gunked up I needed another piece. Now this had a lot of damage in areas and I used the Gorilla Wood Filler. I had to make uh, remake a big chunk um, in the corner on the bottom and repair that big crack that was in the back also. Some of it took more than one uh, coat and there were a lot of other little dings along the way that I needed to fix. Uh, once they were dry, I did get them all sanded up and I was ready to proceed. Now I needed to cut a new bottom for the one side and three walls for the one side and two walls for the other side. So had to bring out the heavy tools. Here's the bottom. I'm measuring pretty good today and all three sides went in um, quite well. I didn't have to take and recut anything. I was pretty pleased with myself. Now I went ahead and used Dixie Bell's Boss Primer uh, because I knew this thing was going to be a bad bleeder. And I have already put one heavy coat on. Sorry, I missed the first one. Didn't hit the go button. And I'm going to hit uh, the panels that you can see sitting there on the box. The reason I did it this way is because this thing had that old antique antique like you walked into an antique shop smell. So I needed to really prime the inside that I was going to be covering up with my new walls. Lock tight, all-purpose power grip. I put a strip of that down first and you can kind of see how um, small that little strip is. I'm going to set that down and then I'm going to take and tack four little nails in all the way around on the corners. Thank you. 
the walls, um, I used the same glue and I had to drop a piece of wood down in the bottom because it was um, offset. And to even it up, I needed that and I for something also to uh, staple it to. And I gave up hammering them little nails in and I went and grabbed the electric stapler <laughs> and it worked a lot better for me. I had this side of the box to do and then also two walls on the other side and just to shape them up so they look nice of course caulking it all the way around on the inside and up top and then after I did get that completed I also did take that Gorilla compound uh, which is yellow and I put that on top of all the staples and when that was dry sanded it all down and then it was ready for me to tape here comes the tape this this took me a whole day now you know what direction I'm going to take with this piece. I'm going to want a little design going around the legs and up around the doors. I'm going to start by spraying the bottom and then the, the top lid underneath on the top of the piece. And then I'm going to go ahead and the color that I'm going to use is Dixie Bell's Silk All-in-One Paint in the color Anchor. Usually Dixie Bell paint is really nice and thick and when you're brush painting that's great. You can use a spritzer with water in it to help, but since I am putting it in my sprayer, um, I used about half of the jar and then I put 30 cc's of water in and stirred it up really well and then ran it through my strainer. I don't know I like my paint thinner. Here we go. Well, I decided I was going to go ahead and paint that little grill front and I used some Rust-Oleum Antique Gold and just put a nice heavy coat on it, just one single coat. It was a pretty warm day out so I figured that it would dry rather quickly so I just hit it with one nice heavy coat. Time for my poly. Let's get the tape off. The poly that I used was super flat matte. Matte flat, one of them. Now it's time to go ahead and start the hand painting and I use Dixie Bell's gold metallic gold color I believe the name of it is gold digger 
This took about six to seven coats to get that nice solid metallic gold look. So it was quite time consuming because it's a rather thin paint. Now I'm going to use the same type of glue that Loctite and put it on the corners of the grill. And then once I get it in place, I am going to put a little tack nail up in each corner to hold it better. Okay, how am I going to clamp this? I want a little pressure on there. So I came up with this wonderful idea. I'm just going to push a board up against it safely wrapped in a towel. Final spray. We'll be ready to put her together. Remember what we started with. There it was. Shout out to Corey from Desert DIY and sponsoring this Ugly Duckling Challenge. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.